So um, let's just talk about Bell Labs again. So now it's talking about exploring. And what Bob Kelly also found with star performers at, at Bell Labs, the, the, the people who innovated the most, had the highest performing teams, produced the most patents and all of that kind of stuff, they did what was known as preparatory exploration. What does that mean? It means that they um, went out and engaged with other people whose disciplines were not related to this. And also they were helpful, genuinely, not, not kind of, you know, in a, a cynical way. They were helpful um, to these other people. Um, and that group were quite a diverse bunch, right? A diverse bunch. So what Alex is saying is that the best ideas come from careful and continuous social exploration. The most consistently creative and insightful people are explorers, seeking out people with different views and different ideas and bouncing their ideas off everyone that they meet. Now, why? Why is this so important? So what, he, what Alex has pointed out is that ethnologists have found that almost all the decisions affecting a group made in social situations uh, are made in social situations. So it's like the wisdom of the crowd. However, there's a massive caveat to that. This only works well when the crowd is diverse because what I am starting to see a little bit in the agile community is the echo chamber effect. So that we've got all of these people who are in agile only stay in agile and therefore because there's a lack of diversity of opinion, I don't think the decision making is as healthy. Now this group, I'm, a, I'm going to assume, are quite um, the explorer because I am talking about stuff that is, um, you know, social physics, social cognitive neuroscience. A lot of agile people might go, that has nothing to do with my world. But all of us in this group know it's got everything to do with your world. It supports a lot of how you operate. Now, um, there's a really great piece of research that uh, Alex did with um, online traders. People are day trading. And he found that the, the day traders who had um, diversity of ideas from their social network, their ROI was 30% higher than individual trainers. So this is really important. Most of our learning um, needs to be done. 90% of our learning comes from exploration. That's the healthy healthy kind of perspective and 10% is individual learning. So when I'm talking to somebody who's in AI and I'm talking to computer scientists, what I'm starting to do is put together lots of jigsaw puzzle pieces that I didn't even know existed to create new solutions to existing problems. And that's the essence of a healthy system. Healthy systems have exploration and have high patterns of engagement. You take the idea from your exploring and in your pattern of engagement, you refine the idea, refine the idea and see if it's really a cracker and how you can apply it in your, in your um, uh, own personal world. Now, what do organizations do though? Um, they do this. And I'm interested to see again, because I know there's a couple of people who are consultants who walk into organizations a lot. And there's a few people here who are in organizations. So what happens is that um, organizations build silos. Now, people build silos. Frightened leaders build silos. So they'll create a power team and they'll ring fence that team. And that team is my team and don't talk to that team. Don't share resources with that team and so on and so forth. Um, and these silos kill idea flow and they inhibit the kind of behaviors that do things like um, increase experimentation. The very things that we need to, to keep organizations evolving and innovating and adapting and so on and so forth, um, we stop that. Now I had a guy, I was doing a, a piece with Stu, um, we were doing a piece on innovation and there was a whole bunch of um, staff members uh, in the banking world. And I said, who does exploration here? And only one person put their hand up and a, and a lady said, you know, I've just realized, I've looked at my network and I've realized it's an echo chamber. And if you've realized that as well, phenomenal, then today has been worthwhile. 
if you realize you're not doing um, very much exploration at all, phenomenal. Then the whole, all of this exercise is worthwhile. Wow. But this chap said something really interesting. He said, yes, I go to conferences that aren't aligned with my core area. And I said, what's your core area? He said, IT. And I said, what kind of conferences do you go to? He said, well, I mean, I go to machine learning conferences, which are fascinating, but I'll go to ones on um, you know, behavioral psychology and stuff like that. He said, except I don't tell the company <laughs> because cause I would get into trouble. And, and you know, Stuart and I, who are in this world of um, being passionate about innovation and innovative thinking, I'm like, are you crazy? So, so we've got organizations that don't, don't just um, kill it internally. They are actively stopping people from going out and exploring. Okay, so question. Um, is your organization siloed in some way? And what effect does that have? 